So basically, the system modeling would help the analyst to understand the functionality of the system and the models are used to communicate with the customer. The model driven engineering process, it is highly important and it is also possible to generate a complete or partial implementation of the system model. In a system perspective, you have an external, you have an interaction, structural and a behavioral. Good morning and welcome to the first session, Unit 3 BCA 5th Semester Software Engineering where we are going to talk about system modeling. Now in this unit, we are going to get introduced to what is system modeling and how is this process helpful enough in terms of developing the various abstract models. So what is system modeling exactly if you start looking into it? It is the way by which we are going to develop some abstract abstract models with each model representing a different view or perspective of that system. Now just moving forward, system modeling has now come in terms of representing a system with a kind of graphical notation which is very very important now almost based on the unified modeling language or what we call as UML. So basically the system modeling would help the analyst to understand the functionality of the system and the models are used to communicate with the customer. Now a system modeling is a graphical notation that's going to be used in order to make the user get to understand how the entire functionality of the system comes in place. So we are going to use this model to make people understand how it is working and why it is important in terms of understanding the process step by step. Now existing and planned system. Now if you look here, the models of existing system are used during the requirements engineering. They help us to clarify what the system does and it also tries to help us in terms of discussing its strength and weakness. Then leads to the requirement for the new system. So the first half, what we do is that we try to analyze the existing system. We try to find out what are the pros and cons, what are the strengths and weakness of the existing system. So once you have recognized the weakness, the challenges that are existing in the system, you come up with the requirements that are needed to develop a new system. Now from there, the models of the new systems are used for the requirements engineering, which are used to explain the proposed requirements of other system or the other stakeholders altogether and engineers use this model to design the proposals used to document the system and for the implementation. So whenever we are talking about this factor, the new models are being used to design and come up in a better way, in an alternative way, how things are going to work for us. So this is definitely helpful for all of us in terms of understanding how the proposed system can be taken forward and built in a better model altogether. Followed by which the model driven engineering process, it is highly important and it is also possible to generate a complete or partial implementation of the system model. So using this factor, we are going to develop the functionality based model, trying to show the customer how exactly the system is going to work. Now moving further, the system perspectives. In a system perspective, you have an external, you have an interaction, structural and a behavioral. So first let's try to understand the external perspective where you will try to understand the environment of the system. That's very, very important for all of us. Why? Because you need to know where the system is functioning, what kind of environment we are going to place and what is that we are looking forward in terms of building the new system. Followed by which interaction, which means the various levels of interaction purpose, how it's going to communicate between the various 
various components of the system is the interaction model followed by which the structural perspective that's going to come into picture the structural perspective is where you are going to model the you know when you are in the model of the organization you're going to structure it out in such a way where it's going to be processed by the system you're going to understand what exactly is needed how it is needed and what are all the factors under which this is going to work in so this is also very very important at this juncture followed by which the behavioral perspective where you will model the dynamic behavior of the system and how it responds so you will understand the dynamic behavior so you will start seeing where the system interacts, how it responds and how it goes forward. So this is where you will try to see how the system will interact and how it will go forward in terms of understanding. So you need to see that in a behavioral way, suppose for example to certain events there is a kind of behavior which may or may not be accepted. That's how the events need to be recorded and it has to be proposed in a better way. Now let's try to understand the UML diagrams which we have been talking about, the unified modeling uh, level language. Why? Because in this, the activity diagrams are involved to show how the data processing has been done. Then we'll have use case diagram which will show the interaction between a system and its environment. We'll have the sequence diagram which will show the interaction between the actors and between the components. We will also have class diagrams where the object classes in the system and the association. And finally, the state diagrams which will also show how it reacts between the internal and external part. Now when you look into the UML component altogether, what is that we are trying to talk about is the activities that are getting involved here here everywhere stage by stage we are going to use a graphical notation and we are going to come out with the best process so that we are able to tell how the system is interacting all together so every sequence has been repeated it's been shown in terms of life to show that to understand how the system is working all together followed by which we would also be talking about the facilitating of this important system altogether where we are going to see whether you need the existing system is okay or the proposed system. We will also say that as a way of documenting an existing system model should be accurate representation. You cannot take any assumptions and start working by yourself. Rather you need to be seeing that where you are getting the maximum amount of information. A detailed description is also needed here that will help us to generate how we can take forward the system implementation. Models have to be correct and complete. Now that is very very important you cannot just draw a model and leave it like that saying that it will make an understanding for the customer by itself rather we have to complete the entire process we have to highlight all those specifications telling that how this model is going to work where are all the factors that we need to emphasize what is going to talk which is going to interact what components are needed what kind of events are going to be recorded everything has to be a part of the system now the context models they are basically used to illustrate operational context of the system what lies outside basically social and organizational concerns where the decisions are going to be made within the boundaries and the architectural models which shows the system and its relationship with the other system so you will have a context which is primarily trying to talk about the internal external the decisions that are made and the architectural models that are coming into picture followed by the system boundaries when we know that what is the limit under which a particular system is being defined and it has been kept. Now when you start looking into it there is a proficient and a very very profound system that needs to be kept on the system requirements. Now why I say this is because what is needed has to be kept within the boundary. You cannot extend the parameters, you cannot keep on extending as you wish. You need to have a defined set of limits under which the system will operate. So if you are trying to make the system go beyond the limit, then the functionality of the system will be disturbed. So you need to see that you are making the system work well within the boundaries and not trying to take it away from the functionality. Now there might be pressure in terms of, you know, to increase or decrease or influence the workload, but that comes with a very good decision. Why? Because if you are trying to do so, you need 
to understand what can be the consequences that can take place from the customer angle. So you need to understand that where we are setting the boundary and how we need to play within the boundaries. Now, the process perspective. Now, process is something which is very important for us. Let's understand it. Context might only show you what is the external and internal environment. But the process that's going to be shown is going to reveal what is being developed, how it is used in a broader business perspective altogether. So we are going to also involve the UML activity diagrams that might be used to define the business models here. Followed by which we are also going to talk about interaction models. So the interaction models are very, very important. Why? Because they would highlight what is the system to system level interaction. How does it highlight altogether? The modeling component interaction that comes into picture, which is going to talk about if a proposed system structure is likely to deliver the required system performance. So it is matching the performance level, the use case diagram and the sequence, which is going to talk about interaction level modeling altogether. Followed by which the use case modeling, because we know that every use case is originally developed to support the requirements of elicitation and it's going to represent a discrete task. It's going to tell particularly how this task needs to be performed at this level. So actors are used in a use case, maybe people or any other systems altogether here. With this, I would like to come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe that whatever has been spoken in this session will be of great help to you, both in terms of theory as well as in the practical walk of life. In the upcoming session, we are going to learn about the different models that are used in system modeling, which will help the software engineering process to enhance better. But until then, stay tuned, stay blessed. You have a great day ahead. Thank you once again for joining me on this wonderful session.